Hey everyone, this is Michael again, and welcome to Monday Night Raw Review. And uh, this is, of course, the New Year's Eve edition of Monday Night Raw. The show was taped, and uh, it was from the Little Caesars Arena in Detroit, Michigan. And uh, it just Raw just ended uh, eight minutes ago. It's 11 o'clock now. Uh, by the time you're seeing this video, uh, it's already uh, the New Year already, so Happy New Year. Uh, to you guys out there, you know, we got like another hour until, uh, you know, next hour until it's 2019 here on the East Coast. So, but like I said, you all have probably seen this the next day. So happy new year to you guys. Hope, uh, you hope your 2019, uh, goes really well. But, uh, Raw tonight, you know, with it being a tape show, yeah, it was just, you know, a kind of a meh show, in my opinion. And there was some stuff that, you know, was decent, some that were, you know, terrible. But all in all, it was just a meh show. But uh, Raw opened up tonight with the steel cage match uh, between Drew McIntyre and Dolph Ziggler. And this was a very good match. Uh, steel cage match between uh, the both of them uh, back and forth uh, between them uh, Drew McIntyre uh, was the one who stood out uh, in this match you know Drew McIntyre going into going into 2019 I have to say he's gonna have a title around his waist uh, next year and I hope he does win the Royal Rumble the Royal Rumble match he's one of my picks to win because uh, McIntyre, you know, when you look at him, you see a champion in him. A guy who should be holding a, a title around, you know, his waist. But, uh, the end of the match, Drew McIntyre ended up winning. Uh, ended up hitting a uh, Claymore kick to Dolph Ziggler uh, to score the win. And so, Drew McIntyre ends up winning. And uh, after the match, McIntyre uh, wasn't done with Dolph. Uh, he ended up uh, getting a chair. McIntyre ended up getting a chair. Gets back in the ring. And he's just, you know, going at it with Dolph. Just punching the hell out of Dolph. Sets a chair up. And hits, he sits a chair up, you know, by uh, Dolph. And he ends up hitting a Claymore kick. Uh, to Ziggler uh, on the chair, like through the chair, and it hit the chair ends up hitting uh, Dolph. Uh, it was really, really brutal uh, how it looked. And then McIntyre gets on the mic, and he ends up saying he is the king of the raw jungle. And he ends up saying to Dolph that it didn't need to be this way, and he kept, and that Dolph kept coming for his scraps. He ends up calling Dolph pathetic and dead weight, and he, that he doesn't, that Dolph doesn't deserve his scraps. And McIntyre goes on to say, "It is time to prove that he is the king of WWE." You know, not only he, you know, not only is he the king of the Raw Jungle, uh, everybody should be calling him the king of WWE. And he goes on to say he's going to win the Rumble match. And fulfill his destiny when he wins the Universal Championship. And so McIntyre ends up uh, walking up the ramp. He ends up seeing Dolph uh, make it to his feet on the Titan Tron. And Dolph is just sitting in the chair. McIntyre ends up coming back down, ends up walking down the ramp, gets back in the ring. Dolph is still on the chair there, you know, made it to his feet. McIntyre then ends up hitting another Claymore kick to Dolph. So pretty much Dolph got uh, decimated by McIntyre. So D Dolph got a very uh, terrible, terrible beatings by uh, McIntyre. But all in all, it was good. It was, a, it was a very good steel cage match. You know, it was entertaining. 
Then after that, we saw a, uh, a limo uh, coming in, and it the, it was revealed to be Shane McMahon and Triple H uh, coming out of that limo. Then uh, when Raw came back from the commercial, we had Seth Rollins come out, and uh, he ends up going on to say that he is not too big on New Year's resolutions, and uh and every week, you know, he goes on to say every week is like a new year and a chance for a fresh start. And he ends up saying he wants to get this party started right now and that he got a rematch for the Intercontinental Championship against Dean Ambrose. And he ends up saying that he wants to do it now. And so Dean Ambrose doesn't come out. Triple, H music, Triple H's music ends up hitting. And Triple H says to Seth that nothing is going to be handed to stars anymore. And he says he's here to say that his rematch, that Seth's rematch for the Intercontinental Championship isn't uh, happening. And uh, he ends up saying to Seth that he's not sure he does that he's not sure Seth deserves a rematch anyway. And Triple H is like he has no pleasure you know, saying that to Seth. And Seth says to Triple H that uh, Triple H only believed in him because he was once his puppet. If you remember the authority angle. And Triple H says he, he believed in Seth. And that Seth was going to be the man here. And Triple H ended up believing in him. So Triple H says to Seth, you know, when he didn't believe in him, was when Seth took him to WrestleMania last year, you know, WrestleMania 33, and kicked his ass till Triple H ended up believing in him again. And Seth was like, you know, he's glad Triple H isn't handing things out anymore and that he wants an opportunity. And Triple H ends up going on to say to Seth, you know, to burn it down tonight. Because he's because Seth is going to be in a match against Bobby Lashley, and so Seth says he can take anyone that gets in his way. He could take down Les Brock Lesnar. He could take the Universal Championship, and uh, he could take the McMahon family if Triple H gets in his way. So basically, Seth was saying, you know, if Brock Lesnar gets in the way, you know, he could take down Brock Lesnar if he gets in his way. He could take the Universal Championship, you know, if, if uh, it gets in his way, and he will uh, get the McMahon family if Triple H gets in his way. And so Shane McMahon comes out, you know, he's, Shane was like to Triple H, oh, to stop amping uh, Seth up. And, you know, he saw that aggressiveness that Triple H was, you know, was looking for in Seth Rollins. But, uh, you know, it was cool seeing Seth have that aggressiveness. And uh, Shane says someone will be facing Dean Ambrose for the Intercontinental Championship in a fresh start battle royal. Whoever wins that gets a shot at Dean Ambrose later on for the Intercontinental Championship. Yes, so yeah, fresh start battle royal. So, yeah, so that was uh, that was the other uh, segment uh, with Seth Rollins and Triple H and uh, Shane McMahon. But uh, so it was a decent segment. Then we had the fresh start uh, battle royal, uh, which was okay. Uh, you had Finn Balor in there, Baron Corbin, Baron Borbin. You had No Way Jose, Apollo Crews, the B Team, uh, the Ascension. Uh, who else was there? Uh, oh yeah, Tyus O'Neill, among others. No Way Jose, I think, was the first to be eliminated. And uh, you know, but Apollo Crews uh, end up win the match. He ended up eliminating uh, Baron Corbin. 
because it came because it came down to uh, both of them. So Apollo Cruz end up eliminated Baron Corbin. Apollo Cruz uh, wins the uh, the Fresh Start Battle Royal. He now has you know he now has an opportunity to face you know Dean Ambrose for the Inter for the Intercontinental Championship. And Apollo Cruz end up finishing uh, this Battle Royal. He had a total of eight eliminations. That's you know that's pretty impressive. You know Apollo Cruz WWE has been making him out you know as a jobber for a while. Uh, they brought him up from NXT uh, too early. He, I mean the guy was entertaining when he was down in NXT, but WWE made the mistake and brought Apollo Cruz up too early. He's been you know stuck in that uh that Titus Worldwide uh, thing if you all remember. So yeah, so Apollo Cruz ends up winning the Fresh Start Battle Royal. Then after the match, Charlie Caruso ended up interviewing Apollo. You know, after saying, you know, what's going, he, she ends up saying, uh, what's going through, you know, your mind after uh, winning this, uh, what's going through your mind after winning this uh, Battle Royal? And Apollo says, this is what he was begging for. And it took him 364 days to get here. Apollo goes on to say that he can't think of any way to spend the last day of 2018 to be the Intercontinental Champion. Do you think WWE is going to hand, is going to make Apollo Crews win the Intercontinental Championship? No. No. It's going to stay on Dean Ambrose. There is no way in hell that Ambrose is going to lose the title to Apollo Crews. Out of all, out of all, out of all people, out of all the superstars on the on the roster. So, I mean, that was that little interview with Apollo Crews. And then after that, Natalia was getting interviewed about what does the future hold for her heading into 2019. And Natalia says, you know, 2018 was full of so many great things, you know, aside from uh, her father passing away. You know, Jim the Anvil Nyhart. And uh, she says it was full of so many great things. You know, being part of the first ever women's uh, pay-per-view, which was Evolution. And she also says, you know, training with Ronda. And having, having the match with Ronda, which happened last week. And she says that match with her and Ronda last week pushed both of them to the limit. And uh, Natalia goes on to say that she, can, she cannot wait to do it again. At WrestleMania. So Natalia then there announces that she is entering the Women's Royal Rumble. And she also goes on to say that 2019 is going to be her year. And so Nia Jax ends up coming. She says uh, to uh, Natalia, you know, what if Ronda is not the champion at WrestleMania? You know, what if. And what if somebody derails her plans? And then we just see Tamina attack Natalia from behind. And uh, Tamina and Naya end up double teaming on Natalia. And that's how basically uh, it ended there. So nice little interview with uh, Natalia. And uh, apparently from this attack, uh, we had uh, a... We had we got a match tonight. It was going to be Ronda. It was Ronda and Natalia versus Nia Jax and Tamina. So after that little incident, that led to uh, the match happening uh, later on tonight, which was uh, the main event. And then uh, we had, of course, this 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 was fuck. This was awful. This this was boring right here, uh, just for this part. But Baron Corbin. Baron Borbin, he was complaining about how he didn't win the Fresh Star Battle Royal. And he goes on to say that he needs a fresh start. <laughs> yeah, fresh start. Yeah, for what? To, be, to still be boring? And Corbin ends up going on to say that he deserves a reward for what he did on Raw. For what he did? 
when he was acting GM and the constable, it just made Raw. Those, those were literally the worst Raws of the year, and that and that no that by no means same because this year WW this year was is one of the worst years for WWE. This whole year, this whole year was terrible for them. And I, I speak for everybody in the IWC and the YWC who agree that this year is WWE one of WWE's worst years. So, so yeah. So Corbin goes on to say uh, he deserves a reward for what he did on Raw. No, you don't. You don't deserve. You don't deserve shit. He doesn't deserve shit. And so he then gets interrupted by Elias, and Elias was out saying Corbin's time is up, and he doesn't want to invite losers to this party because you know it's going to be a uh, New Year's Rock and Eve with Elias, and he ends up telling Corbin to go, and so Elias says he and Kid Rock agreed that Corbin run his mouth is no way to spend New Year's and he says he's got a song tonight and he sings for Corbin to go away and that he ruined Raw and that Elias is going to save Mondays and he says whoever thought Corbin would be entertaining you know should be should be pseudo fired <laughs> And then that led to Corbin run up the stage. Elias and Corbin end up brawling. They brawl into the crowd. Uh, and then, you know, they're still, they're, this whole thing was just Elias and uh, Corbin brawling. Elias ends up throwing uh, Corbin over the barricade. And then Corbin just end up uh, retreating. So apparently this is probably going to lead to Elias versus Baron Corbin. So we all know it's going to happen. <laughs> what if this takes place next week on the first uh, Raw of the new year? So, but yeah, we, we can say we could see see that's coming once again. So yeah, it was just a whatever segment. Then we have Bailey, Sasha, and Amber Moon versus the Riot Squad. Six woman tag team match. This didn't care for this match. You know, it's a typical woman, typical woman, six uh, woman tag team match. Oh, but Bailey, Sasha, and Amber end up winning the match. Uh, Bailey ended up pinning uh, the flying elbow like uh, the late great Macho Man to Sarah Logan. So, and that was the match. You know, that was at the end of the match. But nothing nothing great happened in this match. Didn't really care for it. Then we had Bobby Lashley versus Seth Rollins. Uh, before uh, the match started, of course, we had Leo Rush on the mic. And he says, Lashley was handpicked by Triple H. Because he didn't come... Because he didn't come to pose. That Lashley didn't come to pose tonight. And that Lashley is a fighter. And he goes on to say the world must have forgotten who Lashley is. And that Seth will find out firsthand. And uh, then we had the match. Which the match itself, you know, it was decent. Uh, not not great match by any means. But uh, you had Leo Rush... Uh, interfering uh, in the match where he ended up, uh, you know, flipping over uh, Seth Rollins. And uh, towards the end, uh, Leo was still, you know, trying to interfere. Rollins was trying to uh, get him. Uh, eventually, Seth ended up uh, getting Leo. And, uh, you know, just took him out. But uh, the match ended in a disqualification uh, because Seth ended up uh, hitting Lashley with a chair. And uh, 
just after the match, Seth just kept hitting uh, Lashley with the chair, with a chair. Leo Rush ends up jumping uh, from the top, and Seth just rammed the chair to uh, Leo. And then, you know, they're both uh, down, both Leo and uh, and Lashley. Seth goes to hit both Lashley and Leo with the chair. And just there, you know, Seth was getting ready to hit the stomp, was waiting for uh, Leo, for Leo Rush to get up. And as Seth comes and hits the stomp to uh, Leo Rush, and Leo actually did like a flip uh, when, uh, you know, like a, like he sold the, uh, the stomp and he flipped, uh, which, you know, was which was cool. It looked like he landed. Looked like his head, his head landed on the on the can on the canvas. So, but uh, all in all, it was a decent match. Uh, not great. Not not great by any means. Then we had a match that I didn't even give a shit about: Jinder Mahal and the Singh Brothers versus Heath Slater and Rhino. Did not care for this match. But I'm like, this match, at the end of the match, Jinder Mahal and the Singh brothers win it. Jinder Mahal ends up hitting a Coloss to Rhino. That's how, that's how much I gave a shit about this match. Moving on. So we had uh, Dean Ambrose uh, end up uh, cut a, pro a little promo. Dean Ambrose says that says you know does he look like a guy who needs a fresh start? He ends up saying no, and he says he promises to take everything Seth you know deals with and burn them down. He goes on to say that he doesn't enjoy feel good moments. And that Apollo's fresh start will have a rotten end. So that was that little, uh, that little promo from uh, Dean Ambrose. Then we had the match. Dean Ambrose versus Apollo Crews. Which, this was an okay match. Uh, it was back and forth between uh, Ambrose and Apollo Crews. Apollo Crews, you gotta give, you gotta, you know, cut him some slack in this match. He actually did pretty uh, decently. Uh, here, uh, working on uh, Dean Ambrose, and uh, we all knew we're, we're not that stupid to know that Apollo wasn't going to win the Intercontinental Championship. That you know they're not going to, you know Dean Ambrose is not going to drop the Intercontinental Championship to Apollo Cruz. So, so, so Dean Ambrose. Uh, end up uh, win the match, of course. Dirty Deeds on Apollo Crews retains the Intercontinental Championship. I mean, we knew we knew about this. Whoever thought Apollo was going to win the Intercontinental Championship, you, <laughs> oh man, you, you're possibly you're possibly stupid if you thought Apollo Crews was going to uh, win the uh, the championship. Oh yeah, so all knows okay match. You know, you got to give Apollo Crews, you know, some slack, some slack in this match. You know, he did, he did decent. Then you had uh, Alexa Bliss. Uh, she ends up uh, making an announcement. Uh, it was backstage. It wasn't done in the ring. So she says, Alexa says that she will miss running the Raw Women's Division. And she says that she made history uh, with that. And she ends up thanking the McMahons, you know, for that. And she says she will be making history again. Because next week, she will be hosting her own talk show called A Moment with Bliss. And she announces that her guest will be Ronda Rousey. And so she makes a message to Ronda saying that, she has to dress appropriate because it's her show. It's Alexa's show. 
So, yeah, so we're going to get that next week. Then, of course, uh, for next week, uh, Braun Strowman ends up returning. And Brock Lesnar will be uh, at Raw next week on the first Raw of the new year. And also, John Cena will be appearing on both Raw next week and SmackDown. So, yeah, so all that's to be looked forward to to be looked forward to next week. And uh, then we had the main event: Ronda Rousey and Natalya versus Nia Jax and Tamina. Uh, Ronda Rousey here, always you know impressive. You know she ended up uh, taking down Nia and uh, Tamina. I mean we see Ronda and Nia go at it. Uh, so. But it was, you know, nothing new in this match. It was a tag team match. And uh, Ronda and Natalia end up getting the win. Ronda end up applying the armbar to Tamina. So there you go. Ronda and Natalia end up winning. So, but all of the match itself, you know, it was an you know, okay match. You know, because of, uh, because of Ronda. So, yes, and now and that was your Monday Night Raw, your New Year's Eve edition of Monday Night Raw. So, but, yes, anyways, that's it for my Monday Night Raw review. Uh, thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this review. And uh, if you haven't checked it out, I uploaded earlier my top five favorite films of this year, uh, 2008, of uh, 2018, which, uh, like I said, po possibly uh, when you all see this video, it's probably 2019. So uh, once again, Happy New Year to all of you out there. Like I said, hope your 2019 uh, goes really great. And uh, thank you all for watching. And uh, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Come subscribe. And until the next video, which I'm going to review uh, Bumblebee. So that would be uh, the next video. The mo first movie review of the new year. So yeah, so until that video, I'll see you all later.